Thanks for having me. It's an honor for me to, uh, to join this uh, great platform as well. I've been looking forward to it, actually. Well, after, after high school, I went to college, um, the business economics track. Um, I did a proper deuce at the University of Amsterdam. Um, and then I thought I had enough of learning, so to speak. And I thought I should do something else. Um, I joined a company in the Netherlands uh, that was um, already working in a market space where at that time uh, the national telecom company has been privatized. And um, I needed a place like an intern. So I helped them with building up their uh, customer pyramid and, their, um, and the principles for a, a marketing uh, customer relationship management tool. Uh, built on the customer-based management principles of uh, Jay Curry, uh, the father of, at that time in the Netherlands, a very famous radio DJ, Adam Curry. Uh, so Adam Curry is the son of Jay Curry, and Jay Curry is the inventor of the customer pyramid. And that's how I actually enrolled into a business environment. It was quite later, actually, in my career that I found that when I spoke to, let's say, people who follow a regular academic track, high school, college, university work, and who followed through with all of that, uh, they were at a certain level and they were on par from the moment they were meeting each other. So when I entered a meeting room, uh, I can give you one example. I was the, uh, the chief marketing officer of, uh, of an organization that at that time I was working for. I had a European role. And each time when we had executive meetings, it took me about 10, 12 minutes to get on par. Um, so my management coach at that time uh, advised me, maybe you should do an executive MBA and maybe you should finalize your, uh, your university degree that you actually haven't done in the past years. You've done your college degree and then the first year of university, you thought you had enough of learning and let's go into the working, in the working space. And so my career was quite going quite, quite nice, but I, I felt I, mi I missed some, uh, some academic luggage, so to speak. So in 2007, 2008, I embarked on an executive MBA, uh, which I passed um, on international business and, uh, and marketing. And my, uh, my research for that and my thesis for that apparently was good enough to eventually add a few items uh, and grant me a PhD in economics uh, for sustainability, uh, building sustainable business models and uh, circular economy uh, principles, that environment, uh, with a minor in psychology and philosophy. And that's a bit on my, on my educational side, so to speak. If you look at my career from a company point of view, I've always been working for organizations that have started an initiative a few years ago who developed that initiative and who are at a crossroad, so to speak. So usually when I join an organization, it is most of the time uh, regarding a question that relates to something like, uh, are we still on the right path? Uh, where is the next big thing? What is the next big wave? Uh, in the Netherlands, we have an expression that says, you're too big for the napkin, but you're too small for the tablecloth. That kind of idea. Um, you're, 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 you're too big for the cafeteria, you're too small for the restaurant, that kind of idea. You're on a crossroad. And you don't have enough resources to, uh, to do what you've always done, uh, but you also don't have enough time to do this. So usually that's where I come on board. Uh, I find the next big thing. And I found a few, um, well, not so much big things, but I found big things for companies that I worked for. Um, so different kinds of initiatives were introduced uh, at the end of the 90s. Uh, uh, IP communications as a service for a monthly fee, where communications at that time was uh, digital and analog. Uh, from phone system point of view, for example, uh, the, the, the abbreviation ICT meant information and communication technology, but I, I turned it into the integration of the computer and the telephone uh, because at that time that was a solution that was coming in out of the US and Europe didn't have it yet. And I was able to put it into a monthly fee and roll that out across Europe. Um, so that's a bit of the of the ignition, so to speak, of my career. Uh, I have moved from vendors, creating new business models and uh, help set up um, industry solution sales practices and sustainable businesses, uh, find new partner base. Uh, and usually what happens after a few years is either I get bored or the company gets bored of me. Uh, so there's a new initiative, either within the company, but sometimes I just moved to the partner that we found 
to help embark in this great idea. And then I went from there after two and a half, three years to an end customer that actually makes use of the solution that I kind of co-developed when I worked for different companies. And that's a bit of the cycle in my career. So from a vendor to the partner base and the integrator to the end customer, and then back to another kind of vendor, finding a new partner base, entering that partner base, helping that partner base get up to speed, and then go to the customer side of the equation. In uh, 2008, I was in contact with uh, a great company in China called Huawei Technologies that had the idea to find uh, foreigners, let them come to China and learn about this great company, and then perhaps over a couple of years' time, uh, move back to where you come from and help branch out this, uh, this idea of this great company. But in 2008, the global economy went down, Lehman Brothers went bankrupt, uh, and early 2009, this initiative stopped. So I did something else. I went to the United States and I worked for uh, a small company that wanted to go IPO. Uh, I was looking after the European channel, so I spent a few time in, uh, in the US, then back to Europe. And I'm going to make a long story short. In 2011, uh, August, September timeframe, I came back to Holland, uh, joined my family again, uh, sent out a message that I was available back in the country, so who's up for a cup of coffee? And at that time, Huawei had just established Huawei Enterprise Business Group in Europe, which at that time did not exist. So it was a completely new entity, a completely new strategic business unit in Huawei. And uh, one of the first contacts that uh, got back in touch with me was one of my contacts in 2018, Huawei headquarters, who then said, I'm now trying to build out and I'm now trying to build in Europe, uh, Huawei Enterprise, and we're looking for people who maybe now can join. So tell us where your strengths are and how we can move forward. So on Christmas Eve 2011, I said yes to, um, to an employment ship in Huawei, uh, West Europe, looking after the Netherlands first, then Belgium and Luxembourg, and then West Europe, to help set up industry solution sales practices for the West European region on behalf of Huawei Enterprise, in the domains of uh, government, uh, in the domains of public sector, uh, healthcare, education, um, and, and, and private companies and what have you. And that's how I started working in Huawei.